It was a horrifying event for a Skokie teenager attending school in Israel. Three years ago, Shana Gould was shot in the chest during a terrorist attack in downtown Jerusalem. When the attack was over, two people were dead, several others wounded, and she was rushed to the hospital. With no pulse, no blood pressure, no longer breathing, the Jewish teenager was operated on by Dr. Meir Deeb, a Palestinian surgeon who helped save her life. The two were reunited yesterday for the first time since the incident. They both join us live in the studio. Thank you for coming in so early in the morning. Uh, Shana, do you have a special connection at this point uh, to the doctor? Yeah, for sure. Um, we definitely just have such a bond um, at this point. We're like old friends. It's an, a great story uh, beyond your own personal story, but it would, the hope is, I guess, for everyone in the region, right, Doctor? Yeah, the hope is uh, for a better future, actually, for both, uh, both people. The hope that we will not uh, lose any more uh, civilian and innocent people in this continuing conflict. For We hope both for, for a better future. Yeah. And that we can all live together, and that we're all one people in so many respects. Shana, let's go back to the day of the incident. What do you remember? Um, I actually don't remember much about the incident. I remember waking up in Shari Sedek and um, being surrounded by friends and family and um, being cared for so wonderfully at the hospital. And um, I just remember um, just having such a wonderful experience um, with the hospital itself and um, having my family there was really a great a great thing also they flew in um from chicago and um you were studying there had yeah. you been warned about the possible dangers that people told you don't go i mean we knew um it wasn't like um a feeling of of terror around you actually felt more safe than you did anywhere else um but things happen sure had you had any uh, uh preconceived uh uh, beliefs or uh, opinions on the Palestinian uh, situation or Arabs in general? I don't really think about it and I, I don't really think about it now. Um, I believe that we all just need to work to a greater peace. When doctor, when you, she appears to you, I know as a doctor, she, you don't think about who she is, where she is. She's a patient in dire need. How desperately close did she come to losing her life? Actually, she, she came, what we call it, dead on arrival. She was dead by, by the old sign. She didn't have any pulse, didn't have any blood pressure, and there's no electrical, electrical activity of the heart. So actually she was dead. But we knew that on the way to the hospital she was alive. You know, she had some, 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 some signs of, of living on the way, and she lost them between, you know, on the way to the hospital. So that's urged us, you know, to, to try and, and save her. And this is the reason that we took her straight from the ambulance operating room without any emergency department. We just took her straight and uh, we started working immediately. So the, and, and what helped her actually is our location of the hospital. It's in mid midtown. So any extra minute actually, I don't think that we can, uh, that we could do the same thing for Shana. Uh, Shana, I have to wonder, uh, do you have um, ill feelings toward the people responsible for what happened in that incident? Um, I think one of the ways that my story is unique is that I was shot and also saved by um, Palestinians. Also, I, there were many people um, that helped me um, through my ordeal, but um, I don't have any I don't have any ill feelings towards um, the people. No, um, really, um, I think my message and my story really brings. Um, a greater hope to the fact that we can really come to um, a, a greater peace because of um, the relationship I have with Dr. Deeb and my other doctor um, who was um, a Palestinian Arab and um, the fact that we have such a great relationship, um, both of us, and um, that we all are in contact with each other and um, the fact that the hospital really just has this idea of when you walk through the door, there is no um, race or religion, that everybody is the same and treated all alike, and um, that there is no separation between um, one another is really um, unique. Um, and that 
there's no difference. And I think that that's really wonderful. And we, I think we can all really learn a greater lesson from that. You sure can. Yeah. It's a tremendous story, and I think an inspiring one. And I think I read somewhere, Doctor, that you actually consider her like a member of your family at this point. Uh, it's been three years. We have been keeping contacts over the years. Her father was sending me her pictures all the time, and we are very happy that she's running a normal life. She's not just been saved. She's enjoying life. She's living in New York, running you know normal normal life for a young girl like her. And uh, this is a you know this is a good thing about it. Well, about just one one important point about our our facility and our hospital. Treating Arabs by Jewish doctors, it's our daily life. Right. And treating Jewish patients by Arab doctors is also a normal thing. There's nothing abnormal about it. 25% of all patients in Shari Tzedek Hospital are Arabs from, from, from Eastern Jerusalem and from the West Bank and the Palestinian Authority. So we have a lot of Arab patients inside our hospital, and it's, and it's a normal thing. There's well, nothing, uh, you know, abnormal about it. Exactly. I mean, I, it was a tragedy. Out of that tragedy has come a beautiful story and one of hope for so many people. I want to thank you so much, both of you, for coming in this morning and, and telling us those stories. Thank Nancy, you. over to you.